Hello and welcome everybody. If you are looking for an extremely versatile pure faith build that wields devastating lightning incantations and can switch in an instant to melee combat with a shield utilized as an interrupt and to generate openings for quick slashes, then you came to the right place. This build lets you also mix up between these playstyles as a full caster, caster with shield attacks, full melee or a spellblade like setup all available within a simple weapon swap. If you happen to like what you see, subscribing, liking and commenting would immensely help this channel to grow, but let's dive right into it. I was playing around with a full lightning dedicated build that can switch to melee combat to preserve FP for minor enemies, and also not to be locked into one playstyle which I always find kind of repetitive after a while. While having a pure faith lightning caster setup is easy, that led to the problem of a faith scaling melee option that would also lean into lightning damage, without spreading the stats for a sword and board setup too wide and sacrificing overall damage. Because an Ash of War set to the lightning affinity or lightning weapons always scale with dexterity, so I compromised here on using the pure faith scaling coded sword with holy damage, that works surprisingly well and who doesn't like to wield a lightsaber? The outcome is a devastating lightning caster that gets all the possible damage benefits and becoming a literal force of nature. But you can also switch with minor damage penalties to a shield wielding caster and using shield bash as interrupt for openings or simply to get some breathing room. Or you keep your spells available in your offhand while wielding a quick and strong weapon in your main hand that even penetrates your enemy's shields. And lastly, if you want to preserve FP or simply enjoy mixing in some melee combat, you can play as a sword and board style warrior with more than enough damage for standard enemies that can use a shield as an offensive combat option. Let's take a look at the equipment and skills for this setup. For the lightning caster setup I use the earth tree seal in my main hand for the best pure face scaling and the gravel stone seal in my offhand for the 15% damage bonus on dragon cult incantations which we are using here. As you can see using maxed out seals at 80 faith with the gravel stone seal alone lightning spear hits our willing participant here for 1338 damage. The Earth Tree Seal alone hits for 1297 damage, because at 80 faith the better scaling does not yet outperform the damage bonus on the Gravel Stone Seal. But the difference with roughly 3% is minor. And with Main Hand, Earth Tree Seal and Gravel Stone in our offhand, we are hitting for 1489 damage. That's roughly an 11% damage boost over the cast with the Gravel Stone Seal alone. Additional damage amplifiers come from the talismans that I will talk about later in the dedicated section of this guide. For the spells I go with Golden Wow and Blessings Boon as a buff and a heal over time. I deliberately choose a lightning over a fire damage theme to avoid the additional necessity to buff with flame grant me strength, because buffing up is not a very endearing task in my opinion. But let's talk for a second why this is a lightning based setup and not flame based. I personally like the lightning incantations much more than the fire incantations. In a fire based setup you could also use a weapon set to the flame scaling that benefits from faith and your fire scorpion charm. But for maximum damage you have to use the flame grant me strength buff that only lasts 30 seconds. I played this for a while as a black flame based char, in the end I found the spells to be much more limited and a lot less fun. But if you ever face a lightning resistant enemy, you can switch simply spells, weapon and seal and run the setup as a black flame crusader or fire giant and fire monk based crusader. So the better effectiveness of lightning spells, less buffing and lower equip load due to the very light coated sword which leads to a better armor made me stick with a lightning setup although I had to use a different damage type for my melee weapon. But that is only there to quickly dispatch standard enemies and the flame setup is always available with the same stats so there is an additional option for you to play this build. Now let's head back to the spells I use. Lightning bolt for a cheap spammable option. The first cast comes off rather slow but after that you can chain cast it until stamina or FP run out. Lightning Spear as a long reach, 
hard hitting and cost effective base spell that you can even charge up for more damage. Frozen Lightning Spear and Lensex Glaive for nice AoE options and the ability to apply Frostbite. Frozen Lightning Spear is one of my favorite spells in this game. It hits hard, has a good reach, spreads out in a cone and applies 120 Frostbite. Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike is for big enemies and an absolute boss killer. If you can get it off close to or under a big enemy. I also keep Black Blade as an opener for boss fights to reduce enemy health by 10%. For the melee setup I use the Brass Shield that can easily be farmed early on. It has the highest guard boost of all medium shields and it fits the armor style and general setup very nice. Shield Bash is used as a disrupt ability to give you an opening for quick slashes and the ability to rush headfirst into an enemy attack without taking damage. So instead of waiting for an opening, you can create one yourself. This makes for a very dynamic and fun sword and board playstyle. This also utilizes the shield perfectly in a shielded caster setup. Opposite to an Ash of War from your weapon, you can use your shield ability and your spells at the same time. The Coded Sword offers decent damage and very quick attack speed, so that you can kill standard enemies off without wasting FP. This build really shines with its quick weapon transitions. From full caster to spell blade or shielded caster to full melee in no time. Mixing it all up while losing around 11% spell damage when you are in a hybrid setup. In a spell blade setup you also have direct access to unblockable blade, the weapon skill of your coded sword. This sword also does not bounce back from shields and applies damage through them making it an excellent Spellblade weapon. At level 150, stats with a Confessor starting class are as follows. 46 Vigor for a decent health pool, especially for ranged setup. 37 Mind to provide you with plenty of FP. You will want to push this even further in NG Plus and beyond. 22 Endurance for a heavy armor setup and enough stamina to use Shield Bash frequently and not to get stamina staffed quickly during spell casting. 16 strength to match the requirements for the breast shield and 78 faith that we will bump to 80 with the helmet for maximum damage. The other stats don't matter in this build. Talismans are the obvious lightning scorpion charm for 12% increased lightning damage, Flox canvas talisman for another 8% spell damage and either the Godfrey icon if you use charged lightning spear often and like living on the more risky side, or the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for a huge protection buff. We do have a chunky armor here, so the physical damage reduction is around 22% with Godfrey icon and 38% with the other talisman. For the last slot I prefer Earth Tree Favor plus 2 over a pure stamina boost or faster stamina recovery. It gives you a stamina and health boost while also allowing for a heavier armor set. Three highly valuable traits for this build. Speaking of armor, I use the Landell Knight Armor with the Helic Tree Knight Helm for plus two faith and the Tree Sentinel Greaves and Gauntlets to achieve a whooping 62 poise. This will let you power through your casts despite being hit by most standard attacks. This setup also provides a very good base damage negation. For the Flask of Wondrous Physic I use the Lightning Shrouded Crack tier and either a damage negation or heal over time secondary tier or you could use the Faith Not Crystal tier for an additional damage boost. Despite pure caster builds being extremely strong in this game I never really liked a full caster only setup. This super flexible crusader is really fun to play, an absolute boss killer and very adaptive to any situation at any range. I also really enjoy the shield bash oriented sword and board gameplay where you just smash into enemy attacks instead of waiting for openings. But what do you think about this build and what other setups would you like to see in the future? Let me know down below in the comments. That's all for now about Elden Ring. Take good care of yourself and enjoy your gaming sessions.